For years, my friends and I have fed and will probably continue to feed our toxic addictions by continuing to play the games that we've been playing for years, despite insisting that we hate them. So in an effort to find a new, sustainable fun, I finally settled on Deep Rock Galactic. For years, I've seen countless reports from the game's strangely loyal fan base that DRG is basically the best game ever. Even in the first video of mine that did marginally well, I had several comments telling me to hop on the Deep Rock train. I'd always thought it looked good, but it couldn't be that good, could it? Well, given that I'm sitting here in front of you today, same as I always am, I've got some good news. To put it simply, Deep Rock Galactic is a team-based mining game where you work as dwarves for a mega corporation in order to complete assignments and gather resources which you can use for upgrades in both your arsenal and your drip. I've heard a lot of people compare it to like a more casual sci-fi Left 4 Dead, if that helps explain it a little bit better. Your very first task is to choose a class. Currently, there are four, with no plans to add a fifth as it would skew the class's synergy, but there are still new weapons being added to this day. Each class has its own unique primary and secondary weapons, grenades, and special equipment. Each one is easy to learn, but more or less difficult to master, with the more upgrades you unlock opening different build paths and ways to use the character to its fullest extent. I won't be talking about their grenades because while integral to gameplay and unique to each character, I'm just trying to give you a basic idea of each class's kit. The first class is the Driller, who is extremely useful for his ability to get through the cave quickly with the use of his power drills. His weapons are mostly high AoE and status effect focus, making him one of the most powerful classes, in my opinion of course, for dealing with swarms. The second option is the Engineer. I want you to guess what he does. I'll give you five seconds. If you guessed building turrets, you would be 100% correct. His main ability is the same as the ability of every engineer in every team-based game, but that's fine. It's still fun. He has a strong main ability, but his main guns are also extremely high damage and AoE, with his first primary and secondary being an auto shotgun and a grenade launcher. On top of all that, he also has the platform launcher, his second unique ability, which allows him to create platforms, bridges, walls, and even upgrades that completely negate fall damage. Engineer is arguably the most important at higher difficulties due to the ability curve and huge swarms of high health enemies. The third class is Gunner, the class that's most like a typical DPS. His three primary weapons all have incredible damage, with the second and third being heavily AoE based. His secondary weapons are useful for high single target damage being an excellent complement to his more swarm targeted primaries. His abilities are the Shield Generator and Zipline Launcher. With the first, he puts up a massive round energy shield, and this enemies will not enter and your shield is constantly regenerating, so even if you are somehow getting hit, it's pretty much impossible to die. The launcher puts down a zipline that anyone on the team can use, but it is comically slow. Naturally, out of these four, I chose Gunner because BIG GUN, but his other stuff is cool too. The final class is the Scout. The Scout's main draw is the Grapple Hook, which has a long range and high speed, allowing him to easily reach resources in difficult to reach locations. He also has the Flare Gun, which launches very bright flares that last for a long time and can light up an entire cavern. His primary weapons are, okay, two are full auto assault rifles, which are a little underwhelming, honestly, and a semi-auto sniper that does great single target damage. His secondary weapons are also great for single target damage, that, however, is what makes the scout least essential. Although he's a great deal of fun due to his high mobility and unique weapons, he just doesn't have comparable AoE capabilities that all of the other classes do. In my opinion, of course. But anyways, now that you're familiar with the four classes, let's move on to the actual gameplay. So, like I said earlier, Deep Rock works on a mission-based formula. You go in, get what you need, and get out, while of course scooping up some lovely optional resources on the way. On Hoxus 4, which is the planet that everything takes place on, there are currently eight different mission types. In Mining Expedition, the simplest of these, you mine Morkite, a blue mineral, and deliver it back to the company. In Egg Hunt, you have to mine through organic alien material to collect eggs to steal, and again, deliver it to the company. Then there's the on-site refinement objective, where you must find liquid Morkite geysers and build pipelines to them from the main refinery, defending and repairing them until you have enough to escape. The fourth type is Salvage, where you find many versions of your mule that were left behind to repair them and bring them back to Mission Control. Next is Point Extraction, where you're dropped into a big cave with another depository, requiring you to mine out large blue gems called a, a, -corks? a, a quark. 
a quark. Then there's elimination where you're tasked with hunting massive alien monsters called dreadnoughts. You pop their eggs and then enter a boss fight against them. In the lore, after cooking in the egg a little longer, they apparently turn into something way bigger and way nastier, so I'm hoping someday soon we get to see that. Then of course, you can't have a little fun without some Sunday morning corporate sabotage. In this, you'll hack terminals, keeping up a barrier, which then leads you into a boss fight against an enormous robotic enemy. Each mission, regardless of the objective, is procedurally generated. In games that boast this, it sometimes feels like more of a crutch, but in Deep Rock Galactic, no two minds are ever truly the same. In reality, that may seem obvious, because procedural generation, but no structure, no pathway, no gaping cavern ever even feels similar to ones you've played before. Because each mission type, and as demonstrated there are a lot of them, begs for a wildly different cave pattern, you could sit down and play for hours and never feel like you're revisiting an environment unless you're playing the same mission over and over again, which why would you? Across Hoxus, there are many different regions. Depending on what region you choose to do missions in, that will also greatly affect the environment that you're moving through. It will always change the look of the cavern and will often affect the hazards and other interactive elements that can show up in the environment. The region doesn't affect these, but there are also random events that can pop up ranging from secret bosses to meteorites crashing into your cave, etc. There are so many of these, actually, that even now I'm still seeing ones that I've never even seen before. What the fuck is that? Mm -mm -mm. The charge sucker. I have never seen that in my life. So much content in this game. There, there literally is. Thank, thank you for advertising for my video, by the way. This is, this is perfect. There is so much content in this game. By participating in these random events, they can net you extra rewards such as rare materials or just a shit ton of money or XP. The assignment system is where it really all comes together. When you accept an assignment, you must complete it or all of your progress will be erased. You must complete a certain number of missions to finish each assignment. Assignments are pretty much going to be the way you unlock just about everything. Once you reach a high enough level, you must complete an assignment to be able to purchase new weapons. They can also give you limited availability cosmetics or just heaps of resources. No matter what you're trying to get, assignments are going to be the way to get it. Aside from a few things, one of the major mechanics are something called deep dives, which are long multi-mission objectives that net blueprints you can use for powerful weapon upgrades. There is, however, a level of monotony to the game that I feel like has to be addressed. It does sometimes feel like a grind like no other, but to a certain extent, it does make sense. In this world, you're a slave to the machine. You're a miner, and the corporation you work for sees you as nothing else. This is your job. You shoot bugs, and you mine gold, and you often dream of a world that lets you do something else. But alas, this is your job, so you might as well get good at it. The next thing I want to talk about is something that really stuck out to me, even though it shouldn't have. That, of course, is going to be Deep Rock's monetization system. Long praised by the game's aforementioned fanbase, the way it's monetized is one of the most impressive parts. It is sad that it's impressive, but it's the truth. Even 10 years ago, we would be lucky to spend $30 on a game and actually get the whole thing. Like every other game that's still alive, Deep Rock runs on a season by season battle pass system. Ew, gross, right? The beauty of it is that this battle pass is free. There's no paid alternative, there's no tier skips. The only thing that you can spend real money on in Deep Rock Galactic is optional cosmetic packs, and it's not even like they look way better than anything you can get just by playing the game. I'm not gonna lie to you, I did buy one of these, but what about this game's business model shouldn't be rewarded? Nothing, as far as I'm concerned. The developers are setting themselves apart by literally just making a video game. If they bogged down their game with microtransactions 10 years ago, they would have been snubbed. Sniped from the gaming industry. If they did that now, they'd be the same as everyone else. But they're not. Founded in Denmark in 2016 by six employees, Ghost Ship Games have built themselves from the ground up, now being best known for the game that you're currently looking at. Having sold over 5.5 million copies of DRG across all platforms, they are successful as ever, and I can't think of a team that deserves it more. Oh, the Deep Rock community. This is the very community that managed to convince me to pick it up. They are relentless as they are welcoming, and most of them are just happy to be here. My whole first assignment on DRG, I played alone. When you're by yourself, your friend Bosco tags along, making it a little less lonely, but it's just not the same. Now, I neglected this earlier, but the lobby before a mission is a huge ship with a lot to explore. It's got a bar, barrel, skit ball, a trophy room, and I'm getting ahead of myself. The point I'm trying to make is play with other people. This is a hard game to get into, I'll admit that to you. And playing with others is going to make it a lot easier. At the beginning, especially in the long intro assignment, you'll often feel directionless, like you're working towards nothing, but the grind is worth it. 
Even in my most brutal losses, I haven't met one single person who's been salty, angry, or just unfriendly in any way. I've had full-on conversations while there's 30 bugs patiently waiting for my shield generator to drop. This game is great to play with friends and a blast to work towards new weapons, cosmetics, or whatever it is you want. Basically, rock and stone. Hey guys, um, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed or maybe even liked or commented. Hell, you know, share it around. Send it to your mom, your dad, your girlfriend, your, your dog. Share it, alright? I love y'all, and I'll see you in the next one.